The McLeod Fire was started by lightning August 11th and grew to over 4,000 acres by August 16th. The fire was in position to move rapidly down the eight mile creek drainage toward the community of Winthrop, Washington. When it reached our fuels treatment here, fire behavior dropped off precipitously. I'm Tim Delf, I'm Fuels AFMO here in the Methow Valley Ranger District in the Okanagan Wenatchee. Behind me we have the where the McLeod fire came down into the eight mile drainage and ran into our fuels treatments. Since 2004, over 2,700 acres in this area had been treated with a combination of commercial thinning, ladder fuels reduction, and prescribed fire. And by having these treated areas, it really gives us a good place where we can actually attack the fire. My name's Anna Kulas. I'm a fuels technician on the Methow Valley Ranger District. The way we've approached the fuels treatments for the last 15 years or so has been to look at strategic areas where it makes a lot of sense to have open forests. For example, with the McLeod fire and these fuel treatments and the eight mile drainage, we were able to fall back to this and say, this is a place where we can hold the fire. and This is a place where we can actually take action and get firefighters in safely and be successful. We held the fire on the eight mile road as it uh, basically backed down to the road. It gave firefighters good points to access the fire and to build their containment lines off of them. And do it with uh, limiting the exposure to our firefighters also. So it was very, very effective. I'm Chad Bresnahan. I'm the uh, detailed and the assistant fire management officer position here on the Meadow Valley Ranger District. Another good benefit is in a treated area that we can actually do burnouts and that allows us to control the fire as it enters that area. Burnouts are conducted by firefighters to deprive an approaching wildfire of fuel and burnouts conducted in treated areas can lead to a shorter, less costly wildfire requiring fewer firefighting resources. If we can keep something smaller, it'll be maybe 500 or 100 people working that fire versus a couple thousand. So typically to do a prescribed burn costs us around $100 an acre to implement a prescribed burn. So compared to the cost of a wildfire, that's significantly lower. Commercial and small tree thinning and firewood gathering all help in reducing hazardous fuels. But for a safer, healthy forest, fire needs to be part of the equation and prescribed fire will mean some smoke. Nobody likes breathing smoke, especially after long summers of breathing smoke. I don't like breathing the smoke, but the benefit to prescribed fire smoke is that we can control the duration typically. So you're looking at maybe a couple days of smoke compared to maybe weeks and weeks of smoke in the summer. In 2018, Methow Valley communities saw up to 30 days of unhealthy air due to wildfire smoke, but only one because of prescribed fires conducted in the spring of that year. I think one thing that people have frustrations with is we've been doing hazardous fuel treatments, including prescribed fire, and, and putting up smoke for, for several years, and we're still having these summers full of smoke. And that's just because we're so far behind the curve in terms of bringing fire back to the landscape. The McLeod Fire is just the latest example of how fuels treatments can protect communities and other resources like wildlife habitat, watersheds, and timber. More fuels projects are being planned across the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, but after almost 100 years of putting out all fires, it will take decades of work. We need everyone to commit to the idea that we are in a partnership working towards the greatest good and that each prescribed fire today is not just protecting our properties and our livelihoods, but is also one more step towards restoring forest health for our children and our grandchildren.